Hello everyone, today we will be talking about Leopold fracture classifications. So Leopold fractures are fractures of the midface which collectively involve separation of all or a portion of the midface from the skull base. In order to be separated from the skull base, the pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone need to be involved as these connect the midface to the sphenoid bone dorsally. The Leopold classification system attempts to distinguish according to the plane of injury. So classification, there are three types. So let's start with Leffold type 1. That is horizontal maxillary fracture separating the teeth from the upper face. Fracture line passes through the alveolar ridge, lateral nose and inferior wall of the maxillary sinus. Leffold type 2, it's a pyramidal fracture with the teeth at the pyramid base and nasofrontal suture at its apex. Fracture arc passes through the posterior alveolar ridge, lateral walls of maxillary sinuses, inferior orbital rim and nasal bones. Uppermost fracture line can pass through the nasofrontal junction of the or the frontal process of the maxilla. The fourth type 3. Craniofacial dysfunction. Transverse fracture line passes through nasofrontal suture, maxillofrontal suture, orbital wall, and zygomatic arc or zygomaticofrontal suture. Because of the involvement of the zygomatic arc, there is a risk of the temporalis muscle impingement. So, this is the diagram that's physically showing a summary of type 1, type 2, and type 3. So, Lefort 1 involves the palate, Lefort 2, nose, and palate, and Lefort 3, entire face. So there is severe soft tissue swelling, ecchymosis, airway obstruction, all need maxillofacial consult. So Lefort 1. Next, so maxillary signs are malocclusion, buccal ecchymosis, epistaxis, maxillary crepitus, and maxilla is mobile. In Lefort 2, it is pyramidal signs, mid-face crepitus, facial lengthening, bilateral epistaxis, infraorbital paresthesia, ecchymosis, buccal periorbital subconjunctival. Level 3, craniofacial dysfunction, the signs are caves in or flattened, lengthened face, CSF rhinorrhea, bilateral epistaxis, lateral orbital rim defect, ecchymosis, jitpari orbital or subconjunctival. The diagram showing level 4, 1, level 4, 2 and level 4, 3. So a memory aid for remembering the type of fractures is left 4 1 is a floating palate, which is horizontal, left 4 2 is a floating maxilla pyramidal fracture, left 4 3 is a floating face transverse fracture. So any combination is possible. For example, there may be two type 2 on one side and contralateral type 3, or there may be unilateral type 1 and 2 fractures. It should be noted that left four fractures are often associated with other facial fractures, neuromuscular injury, and dental avulsions. So, history and etymology. Lefort fractures they are named after René Lefort, French surgeon 1869 to 1951. Lefort conducted experiments on 35 cadavers inflicting varying facial trauma by dropping cannonballs and striking them with a bat. He would then boil the heads to remove soft tissue and record the results. So what are some practical points that you can take from here? Fracture of the pterygoid plate is mandatory to diagnose Lefort fracture. Anterolateral margin of the nasal fossa involvement. If fractured, it is a type 1 fracture, and if intact, it excludes a type 1 fracture. Inferior orbital rim involvement. If fractured, it is a type 2 fracture. If intact, it excludes a type 2 fracture. Zygomatic arc involvement. If fractured, it is a type 3 fracture. If intact, it excludes a type 3 fracture. Nasofrontal suture involvement indicates either a type 2 or 3 fracture. A combination of fractures may occur on the same side. Bilateral fractures may be asymmetric. So the incidence. Left 4, 1, the incidence is 42%. Left 4, 2, 30.6%. And left 4, 3, 27.4%. So that's all about left 4 fractures. Thank you.